Hey, 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 it's Carrie, and I would love to hear from you. Share your story with us on the platform. You are listening to Camouflaged Beauty, a podcast of shared experiences for military and veteran women. Hey, 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 it is Carrie, and today we have a special guest on the platform. That special guest is me. So in recognition of Domestic Violence Month, I am doing an episode, solo episode by myself, my very first one. And I just want to talk to you a bit about domestic violence, my outlook on it, and, um, you know, my experiences with this uh, traumatic and uh, tragic um, uh, situation. So first, I want to start by saying that my experience is only that. It's my experience. This is not to take away from anyone else's experience. This is not to discredit anyone else's story. I deal with my situation uh, differently than some folks may, and that's okay as well. I think a lot of times I have spoken at domestic violence uh different things. I've spoken for different things on domestic violence. And a lot of times after um, I speak, I get a lot of interesting views. You know, you don't act like someone who's been through domestic violence or you and your ex-husband are still friends or, you know, I'm not walking around as this traumatized, victimized woman. And so maybe I wasn't, I don't know, traumatized or beaten enough So, um, again, this is just my outlook on the situation. So most of you know, I got married at a very young age. um, And during that marriage, um, I experienced emotional, physical and, uh, you know, somewhat of mental abuse. Um, I would like to say that the that conversation, that situation for me, I can look back now and tell you there are numerous things that added to that situation. One of that being youth, uh, inexperience, um, our own past traumas, our lack of education, uh, social education, understanding ourselves, understanding life, understanding the world. Um, None of that means that I should have endured some of the things that I endured nor does any of it mean that it is acceptable for what my partner at the time um, may have done. But I deal with mine in a in a little sarcastic way, a bit of humor. That's how I get through it. I have gotten through it, and um, you know that's just my way of doing it. Um, so experiencing domestic violence in general changes you, I believe. It exchanges your perceptions of yourself. Uh, it changes your perception of the world. It may change your perception of, of the men that you're with. I also like to add that domestic violence is not just uh, a man doing a violent thing to a woman. Sometimes it is the woman doing something to a man. Um, it has no particular age, gender, religion, um, you know, sexual orientation, any affiliation. I don't care how much money you make. These things can happen in your life and they happened to me. So I was in a relationship that we were young, we would party, we would drink a lot. And I'm gonna tell you now, in my opinion, that was a huge contributing factor uh, to a lot of things that we went through. I remember uh, being in Japan, we had these huge countertops in our kitchen. And at one point, my countertop was laid out with liquor. And I remember one afternoon after enduring some things over time, uh, coming home and throwing all of that liquor away. So we would have these parties or pregame or whatever at our house. And people would come over and bring a bottle. And then when they left, they would leave the bottle. So we had this large collection. And uh, my husband at the time uh, wasn't working. And he would stay home and drink. And I would probably come home and drink too or whatever. And every weekend we would drink and party and go out because that's the overseas way of doing life, right? And so I think that allowed us to argue a lot more. 
it didn't help our situation as we were arguing, especially if you're drunk, right? And uh, young again and inexperienced and other things. So that led to um, some of the arguments and situations that I think we um, we went through. So domestic violence is a term specifically used in the military um, to express uh, violence or the attempted use of violence or threatened force against a partner. It could be an intimate partner. It could be a spouse. You don't have to be married to the person. You could just be living with this person as well. It is uh, something that is punishable under the UCMJ. Um, I did not know that at the time. Um, but I also had a certain sense of shame that came along with domestic violence for me. There is me, you know, smiling and somewhat seemingly confident. And what would people think about me if I went through these things? So if you knew me during that time, you probably saw very uh, many different emotions in me. You probably couldn't really read me. You probably saw me as a fraud in a lot of ways. Like you didn't know how I would come off. You never knew uh, what you would get from me. And a lot of that I've learned over time was me um, hiding from myself, me hiding my truth from people, um, the fear of being judged, because y'all are, y'all are super judgmental, let's be honest, right? So the fear of being judged and the fear of what would I say? Did I deserve it? And not only that, if you know me well, you know I have a clap back and a comeback for everything. So a part of that I felt like well, maybe I uh, maybe I am responsible for all of this because I do have a slick mouth, right? So if I just stayed quiet, if I just smiled through the pain, if I acted like a more wifely person or a more, I don't know, acceptable woman, then maybe these things uh, wouldn't happen to me. So I apologize in advance if you knew me during that time. <laughs> and if you wrote me off during that time, I totally understand. And if you did not, thank you for rocking with me anyway. Um, and understand that I am absolutely flawed. I am human. I have gone through many different things. Some I share and some I do not. And um, and that's my choice. And so that's one of the things I want to talk about as well. Um, whether it's domestic violence um, or any kind of trauma, it does not matter what it is. People should be allowed to share when it's convenient for them. A lot of times, like I said, we can't read people. We don't understand what they're going through. And we tell people our stories and they're like, well, why didn't you just tell me? Because I didn't want to. That's why, you know, (laughs) I wasn't comfortable at the time. I didn't know how. I didn't know how to deal with it myself. I had to pick myself up and go to work and try to figure out who I was and, you know, still love this man or not love him today and figuring out what that looks like. I was not worried about telling you to get your approval or friendship or, you know, whatever that may look like in that moment. Um, But I had to understand what domestic violence was. I had to understand that with, you know, there was a lot of apology there was a lot of hurt behavior that came from him. And and, and, and this is my side of the story, because I'm sure if you talk to him, he'll probably tell you there are a lot of things that came from my end as well that probably pissed him off. So I had to deal with what that looks like. I had to wonder if I was really being abused. I don't even think I knew I was being abused for a long time, because in my mind, I was like, I've seen domestic violence in my life as a child. So in my mind, I always told myself that would never be me. So I didn't even know I was being abused. I just knew I was going through this thing that wasn't right and I couldn't put a term on it or maybe I didn't want to put a term on it at the time because it was scary for me within myself. So, you know, I have asked, I've had people ask me that over time. Well, why didn't you just say something? Quite frankly, because I didn't want to or I couldn't or I didn't know how. And I think that's the most basic explanation um, that I can give and it may not be the one that people want to or have wanted to hear over time. Um, But it's my explanation nonetheless. So again, I talk about some of the, you know, I didn't know I was being abused. Like, I don't get abused. Do you know me? Um, I fight back. Like, I, listen, not, not CC, right? In my own mind, this is me talking to myself. So it it was easy to happen in my world. Um, 
A few years ago, I started using a quote. You've heard me here, use it here a few times on this platform and other areas of my life. If you watch other podcasts that I do or you've heard me speak other places, you cannot heal what you hide. So my deaconess and my church taught me that you cannot heal what you hide. And, and the hard part of domestic violence is I had a few people around me in my quote unquote circle. And funny about that circle, only one person in that circle, uh, shout out to you, Brittany, uh, really knew what was going on and really kept me alive. I didn't tell my family, my closest friends, my unit. I made an excuse for everything. Um, I, I, I justified a lot of things because it wasn't even so much at the time about protecting him. It was about protecting me, you know, <laughs> like, what do you mean I am getting beat at home? What do you mean I just got dangled from the third story balcony? Did you know that he tried to drown me with a fifth of Hennessy? And I don't even like the smell of Hennessy right now. It's a drink I can't drink because it takes me right back to that moment. What you mean? I don't go through that. Not me, right? <laughs> and so you put on your smiling face, you know, you go out and you're okay. Furthermore, it took a very long time for me to wrap my mind around all of this because like I said, yes, I went through some of these things, but please understand that I clap back, okay? So I fight, I, you're not just gonna beat me. Oh, we're gonna be in this house fighting, right? So, you know, it, it was hard for me to separate the two and understand my reaction to the action um, and, and understand my role in all of this and how uh, this thing really uh, played in my life. And honestly, I got divorced. You know, I didn't talk to him. We got divorced for other reasons, right? But I, that too, but other reasons. I didn't talk to him um, for a long time. I hated him, but truthfully, I hated myself, right? I hated myself. So I had to go through this journey of, of understanding who I was what I experienced and everything that I've gone through from that experience, even before that experience, but that experience on has brought me here today. So I'm here today to be able to talk to you as a woman, a woman who has experienced domestic violence, a woman who has experienced many different types of traumas that we talk about in the military, um, a woman that can stand here and say, I have been through it. It took a long time for me to be able to say, I have been through it and to be able to talk to you about it, but also talk to myself about it and to talk to myself about it in a, uh, or to people about it from a place of um, growth and not a place of shame. I have no shame that I've been through this thing, that I have been human, that I have missed the flags and the red signs that, you know, the red flags and the signs that I have made mistakes, um, that I have, you know, argued with my husband, that we have gotten a fight in public. And some of y'all listening have been there and seen us. And some of y'all have seen me in J-Draws in Japan with my shirt ripped off of me in front of everybody. Some of y'all was there when we was drunk and arguing and going back and forth, right? And, and some of you guys, I don't blame anybody because one, it's not your business. And two, you probably didn't have the experience or the understanding either to even know how to address a situation like this. So there's no real reason for this uh, solo podcast, except, you know, I want to talk to you guys because, you know, why not, right? I, I'm talking to you guys from a place of, if I can, you can too. And those words are so simple. Um, but they're so powerful because throughout life and throughout my career, one way or the other, someone has uh, been able to look up to me or look at me as a voice of reason or uh, credibility or I, I'm strong. And, you know, and sometimes that in itself is like, wait, what, me? Do you know me? I don't think you know me. And I had to get comfortable with if they knew me, truly. If you knew me and my broken pieces and the things that I've been through, could you accept me nonetheless? Would you be okay with, you know, seeing me still as the strong person? Could you be able to understand that two things can be true at the same time? I can be both uh, a survivor of domestic violence and I can also be afraid to share my story. I can be now 
comfortable to share my story and talk about it in all kinds of platforms and mediums over the years. And I can still get flashbacks today and not know where uh, those flashbacks are going to take me in the moment, emotionally or mentally. Um, so it's a multifaceted thing. It's not a cookie cutter thing. It's not a straight line. It's not, it's, it's not pretty. It's, it's not neat. You know, you know, if you have OCD, you know, in some cases, this ain't free. This, you may not understand, right? It's not do step A, get to step B and C, and you'll just continue down this path of progression. Sometimes I get to step K and I get pulled all the way back to step A or B. I never know. But I try every day and I try to be transparent with this every day for me or for you that's listening. And you know what? I can almost guarantee there's probably someone right now that's listening that's saying, oh, my God, whatever. Here we go. Another victim. Or I don't want to hear this. Or she's this or she's that or whatever. First of all, number one, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. And that is okay. There's someone out here who needs to know that is A, okay to share your story or B, not, right? And whoever that person is needs to hear this from me. So if this is not for you, feel free. You don't have to listen. You can log off or whatever. But what I ask you to understand is that as we grow through life's journey as people, as humans, as adults, what I ask you to understand is that everyone comes to a point of hurt, trauma, brokenness, pain, lack of understanding of themselves, of life, embarrassment, whatever that may look like. And honestly, that is being human. I am no better than anyone else. Yes, I am a survivor of domestic violence. Quite frankly, I'm a survivor of quite a few things. And that's okay. I will share what I want to share for me to empower myself on this daily journey as I continue to grow and hopefully for you as well. If you are in the military or you know someone in the military that is experiencing domestic violence, listen to me and listen to me very well. There are a lot of things and people out here who are going to tell you that there is no support for domestic violence. And I am here to disagree. I'm not going to tell you that the information or the resources that the DOD provides is perfect. I'm not going to tell you that they always work. I'm not going to tell you that, you know, it's easily accessible to and every leader is very well aware and can roll off their tongue of all the resources that are available for domestic violence or any other traumas that people in this uniform may have experienced. What I will tell you is, A, that there are resources out there. And B, if you don't believe there are enough resources out there, what are you doing to help to make it better? Sometimes, sometimes those resources is not just what the DOD provides. It is with a personal person like me who have gone through it. Some of the resources that I may have used or other people that I know that have experienced it that I can tap into to say, how do we get someone else the support they need? You can be a resource yourself. Don't wait on Uncle Sam or your unit insert exposition here to develop a policy that is going to fit into your situation. You go out here and you be bold and you kick in doors for yourself. It doesn't matter if it's domestic violence. I don't care what it is that you're going through. While you're sitting here waiting for the policies and they're waiting to change policies, I support that. Absolutely, I support that. Come to the table with ideas. Come to the table with solutions. Come to the table for the conversation. Even if you don't share your story, open your mind to doing more for someone that can be out here that needs this help because I laugh and joke about it and I can be sarcastic about it. But truth be told, I know many women that almost didn't make it because this thing has taken lives. This is serious business. Some people are not here to share their story and tell you what they have endured because it has taken their lives. If you are out here, and you are abusing somebody. Nobody wants to hear that they're an abuser. Nobody. 
when I had to first admit to myself that, Carrie, you got a slick mouth. You need to work on that. That was one of the hardest things that I had to do when I had to look myself in the mirror and say, girl, that mouth right there is going to get you in trouble, right? Not saying your slick mouth or whatever it is about you and your personality is a reason that anybody should mistreat you in any way. If they don't like you, don't fool with you, leave you alone. It's cool, right? However, you have to get to the point where you take some honest self uh, reflection and some introspection to say, who am I? What am I doing? How do I become a better version of myself? How do I attract the type of people that I want to attract? How do I do the things that I want to do? And sometimes, honestly, that means cutting off every damn person that you know. Those friends and families and your bestie and all these people who have enabled you to continue to do these whatever habits that you know deep down you shouldn't be doing. It may be time to cut them off. So if you are a person who needs some help, whatever that help may be, go find it. If you don't know where to start, call me. I may not know where to start, but I can help you find out where to start. I'm pretty sure I, working with you, can probably have more success than you working alone. And if we can't do it by ourselves, I have other people that I can tap into. You have other networks you can tap into. And together, together, we can all uh, be a bigger part of change for ourselves. And change really starts with you. So I said a lot to say, my name is Carrie and I am a survivor of domestic violence. But my name is also Carrie and I have a lot of things that I need to work on as well. My name is Carrie. And there are very few things that you can tell me that I A, haven't done or seen myself. But I continue to do this through this medium of this platform for this podcast for people like me people who were afraid to share their truth. People say share your truth like it's easy. You know, they like, say share your truth like it's it's nice and clean. The moment you share your truth, it is 25 people standing behind you ready to judge your same truth that they just pushed you to share. And when the fallout comes and the cancel culture is there, they're not here to support you. They have moved right on to with their lives and you're out here sharing your whole truth and dealing with the trauma and ain't nobody there to help you pick up the pieces but you. Ask me how I know. I can tell you because I've been there and that's okay. I had to get to the point where I shared when I was ready and I was comfortable, but I knew, and you will too, I knew when it was time to share, when it was eating me alive on the inside, when everything I did didn't make sense, when I looked at myself as a fraud, when I said I have nothing else to lose, when I was so secure in who I was, I don't give a damn what nobody tells you about me because can't nobody tell you about me like I can tell you about me. And I have zero shame in anything that I've been through. Oh, just wait for it. There's so much more to come in my story. And there are people from all walks of life that have seen me prior to the military, in the military, my missteps. You know how your mama said when you were growing up, if you fall, you should laugh at yourself first? Story of my life. That's how I'm living my life in 2021 and going forward. You ain't got to tell no, you, you don't have to ask about me. I can tell you about me and I can do that because the strength that I have gained from some of the scars and bruises that I have endured is not just for me. This strength is to help carry someone else out the gutter that they're in right now. The same way there are people ahead of me that helped pull me out of the gutter when I needed that. And once I pull you out of the gutter with my strength, all I ask is that you add your strengths to mine and together we help to pull some other people up as well. That's it for me, y'all. I don't really have anything else to share, but if you need me for anything, it doesn't have to be an actual podcast interview, though I'm always looking for beautiful, amazing military and veteran women to share their stories. It doesn't have to be about domestic violence or trauma. Leadership in this, in this uniform is so much bigger than that. And I've been in for so long, and I'm, I think I'm just starting to learn that over the last two years. My influence, my idea of, of leadership 
for me is an opportunity. It's not the opportunity that the Air Force gives me. It's not just the opportunity that the Air Force gives me. It's not just the rank that I have earned. It's not the position that anybody puts me in. It's this right here that I have. It's these stories. It's this journey. It's this life that I've been blessed with because I recognize that some people are not here to share their story at all. Until next time, be kind. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. You can find us on the book, IG, or Twitter. Email us your stories to camobeautystories at gmail.com. That's it for me, y'all. Until next time, be kind to your body, soul, and mind.